Hey, everyone. Listen, we are just a couple of weeks away from end your year strong. And if you have not registered, I'm wondering what rock you've been living under. It's going to be happening in Atlanta, Georgia, December the 7th, 16th and 17th. And you want to make sure that you register. Today, we have the one and only Todd Dulaney. Welcome. Hey, Dr. Trim. Thank you for having me me. Listen, it's been too long. I'm so excited to have you once again and to be hosting you, especially after I heard that you did a live recording. How was that? Um, it's, it's, this recording is the biggest recording of my life. Um, I, I really believe that why God would wait to this one to make it as big as, as, as this one's going to be big. The, the Moments that happened that night, um, I don't think I've ever experienced something so I'm really, really, really uh, excited to, 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 I think, shift um, completely when we release this next record. This is going to be exciting. Tell me, what can we expect? So, so there, I got like, 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 you know, like, so, so this, we're not editing editing down anything we want to experience what, what happened that night i think that in the music industry caught up in the precision of everything as far as packaging up a, a, a look like it's supposed to be aesthetically but this record i'm going for flat, flat out glory people to feel like i was in the room and i felt the touch from god as i ride in my car yeah, this is going to be exciting because I think people are consuming, and I use that word um, deliberately, they're consuming um, the worship experience differently. I mean, 20 years ago, our consumption of worship was different from what it is right now. And as you peer into our current situations and circumstances, and then you look forward, where do you think God is going to take number one, the music industry, and then number two, gospel in particular? So I, I kind of just feel like a stop shop kind of thing. It, it, what he's doing, even in the music industry, he's doing it in the church and a heavy exposure of, of things that are not really him. And, and he, he's elevating things that he has his hands on and things that he approves. I believe that um, you, you may have a lot of things that may rise for a moment are the things that God has his hands on. And and we're, we're closing in on the last days. The things that God really approves, you'll, you'll see those things remain and they won't be able to, I'm feeling like in the music industry and especially in gospel music, that's going to be a thing. Um, you may see gimmicks. You may see something rise up, maybe a hot hit song or something like that. That God really, really has stamped and approved are the things that are really, really going to stay up the world in, in the end days and in the last days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the uh, this song. Um, it talks about the heart of worship. It's all about you back in the day. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I really believe that the average Christian is chasing after God and how important mm -hmm. he is. I was in college, and you're going to probably laugh at this, <laughs> but I was in college. I have this obsession with music. I'm absolutely obsessed. My first um, album that I bought back in the day wasn't... Um, like a Michael Jackson album. The first one was a classical by Tchaikovsky. Okay. And I'm, so I'm really, you know, I am really, um, I have profound appreciation and understanding of music and I know what I'm listening to. But back in the mm -hmm. day, I was so obsessed with music. I, I literally studied piano and okay. um, I was going through a book a month. They were. They just thought that I was the next best thing to slice bread. I still can't play. <laughs> I cannot play a lick. It's not my. It's, it's, I'm like gifted in that area, but uh -huh. I have 
amazing ear. So I know what I'm listening to. Okay. Um, I, I know how to interpret and I know interpretation of music and sound and notes, uh, but I still can't play. And it's <laughs> interesting, uh, you know, my house is actually wired for music. Every room is wired. Okay. Every room, including the bathrooms. Wow. It's, it's, it's just wired for music. So I listen to music every day, all kinds of music. Your favorite genre? My favorite genre, I would say, I I love country music because it, it, it sings a lot about love and love and and you you can find a ton of songs and and then Doctor Trim like be on what I listen what content is in what I'm listening to so mm-hmm. a lot a lot of people would consider me when it comes to this religious right they they mm-hmm. would be like it's not that loud I know how powerful music is and I know what it just to answer your question country music because they sing so much about love and then as far as the um, chord progressions what they're trying to do it's not make it too crazy as far as musicianship wise it's really clear when I listen to it is because when I played baseball that was the only station that would come through when we were we're out in some of those towns. <laughs> That's so funny. I don't know if most people know that you were actually drafted for the New York Mets. Yep. 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 Player um, played for five years professionally. And, and, um, and now I'm training my son. He's 11. And he plays 13-year-old baseball. Really, really solid. One of the top. Mm-hmm. 11 year olds in the state of Illinois and, and um, I believe I'll be able to live through him one day as he makes money playing the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what happened? I mean, you know, you're playing professionally, New York Mets. That's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, so how, what did God do to tap you on the shoulder to say, I need you here? It, it was subtle. He introduced me to Smokey North the first. Mm. I, yeah, that was a part of his plan. I didn't see mm. it as the plan. That was his, that was the initial move. I met this man that was one of the first in the kingdom of God. Like I, I didn't, I was, I was never a churchy guy. See this thing to where it, it, I could actually, okay, I can see my life like that. I saw him. Children, he, you know, he had money, he had, had you know, he, he had success. And so when I saw that, that I, it was very, very, I was like, man, this is, I could do this. This is serving the Lord. I Because it, it, everyone else I had saw in my life made it look like it was, I didn't want it, right? And so, uh, but after I met Smokey, then Smokey, and I just say Smokey because we're, he's like my, my mentor, I should say pastor. You know? We're on this platform, but I met Pastor. He uh, asked me to sing background for him, so I began to travel and um, I told me everything. And then he saw it first. He would say, "Say, you're you're going." I, I hate that they even said this, but he said, "You're going to be bigger than me in 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 the gospel." I was like, "Do you know who you are, man? And you're you're the man." And he's like, "No, no, man." He's like, "God, and I'm supposed to teach you everything." that I know. And so he taught, taught me um, the business. He let them in record labels and executives. And, and I just would just sponge it up, not knowing what I it. He taught me how to write songs. He taught me how to study the Bible. Um, you mm-hmm. know, like coming out of baseball, he didn't, I didn't know. He said, because I would try to do ad libs and songs and he would say anything to say. And I was like, yeah, I know. But how do I find out something to say? He says, you have to to read this, I promise you, you'll begin to be able to ad lib to a song. And I started studying it and developing. Um, so that was my exit from baseball um, because I saw it looked like what I wanted to be with my life. Um, family man, yeah. It's almost like it's almost like the scripture that says, "Find someone to imitate." 
Um, and, um, and it's all about role models, isn't it? Uh, it's all yes. about finding the right role model because relationships, everything rises and falls on a relationship. And so what would you say to the up and coming recording gospel recording artist or mm -hmm. a worship leader or minister of music? What would you say to these individuals? So it's a couple of things. One thing is you got to know what God thinks all of this. And the, the only way that you really can search that out is and reading what he said like like uh, i don't know how this without real knowledge of what he thinks about us or what he thinks about um you know like and so that's the first thing i would say you gotta open that bible up to 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 eat it up you make yourself you force my daily diet and i gotta have it um, that's the first thing, and and then to, to authentic relationship with with Christ. It's got to be mm -hmm. real, or ever be able to, to stand before people and cause, cause them to believe they don't fully believe. Mm -hmm. um, like I got, I I hear people all the time that can they uh, believe the gospel. Like you know, so many people that can get up and sing about Jesus. Um, they know how to church the people and know how to, you know, tune up. At, but if you don't have an authentic relationship where you really, really are, where he's checking us and it'll show when you stand before people and they will be able to not what you truly believe. So those two things I believe would really help uh, build a foundation for any up and coming artists. Yes, thank you so much. You, those of you that are just tuning in, we are talking uh, with Todd Delaney. He's going to be one of our guests for End Your Year Strong, December the 16th and 17th. If you haven't registered, I want you to register right now. Um, so we're in this new normal. And how can we actually take advantage of the new normal as it relates to our personal worship and our personal devotional time? My God, that question is loaded. I, I, well, <laughs> normal is, is I think, a, a kind of a force of the mundane and out of the, the, the routine of it all we of using the church and the building as a crutch using i go to church on wednesday gotta go to choir house on thursday gotta go on sunday we fought we fell into that so i normal it's showing you that your walk with christ the relationship way you can get to him the way you can reach the world has no limits throw out all of your routine thinking, your thought process that you throw it out, out because there are no limitations to how you can and reach the world. And it's such a beautiful thing. I mean, that internet really rolls and it shows us that even us sitting right here right now, we're talking to the world. We're talking to the globe to, to send angels out while we sit right here. And yeah. So the new normal make takes all walls and limitations off of everything mm -hmm. and says you can get whatever right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think so, too, because I think we have some challenges, mm -hmm. but we also will have opportunities. So I'm in agreement with that. What do you think the greatest challenge is? The greatest challenge, I believe, is that. The internet is not used um, to specifically bring it by, by believers. I believe that we're so consumed with everything here that, that we don't even realize that this is, is a method that God desires to rally the frontliners 
leaders all over the world. Um, and so I believe that although it is a beautiful thing that has been created in a way that we can really change the world, leaders really have um, really caught fire yet. We really can utilize it to do what we're supposed to do and do what we need to do. Right now, we're so caught uh, uh, back and forth and the political warring and the and that we're not using this thing the way I believe we can. But I'm though, um, because right now on this internet, you got darkness and light, which is a beautiful thing. And if yeah, we just wake yeah. up, <laughs> you know, it, people it, don't have it's something if we just people you, don't have a choice to make until there yeah. are options. And so we have to make yeah. our option really, really strong. And and I think music is a part of it. Um, yes. I listen. I listen for frequencies. I listen uh, for the uh, dimensions and depth and the color um, that comes with the music before I listen to the lyrics. Mm. Um, and because music is a, is a frequency. Uh, or music is played on frequencies that alters the molecular structure of everything. It moves molecules. It's it's you know it's it's like prayer. Prayer. There's nothing that's off limit to 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 prayer. No one and nothing. So can you imagine if prayer is the incubator and the womb through which the sound is birth. I think we have a great opportunity to Ooh. birth new sound. I, I think about people like Michael Jackson. He bought sound and movement. Um, and it was it was a collision, wasn't it? Because you had MTV and there was no video. And Michael, when MTV as a technology was introduced to TV, they needed video, but Michael Jackson was prepared. And I think, you know, when I talk about our theme this year is emergence, oh preparing goodness. our people prophetically for the inevitable. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I really appreciate the prophetic, but I don't need prophets that are unskilled. I don't need you <laughs> to tell me my name. I already know my name. I don't need you to tell me my social security. I don't need you to tell me my mother's name, my father's name. Not impressed. What should we be anticipating? You see, you cannot be prepared for tomorrow by focusing on today. And I think that's where a lot of people are. They're distracted. One of the greatest challenges to a believer is to stay focused. Um, and reading the book of Habakkuk, it, it, the first chapter is him giving God a litany um, of why you think he's not paying attention to the believer and why would you let the unbeliever be used as a, a tool to judge us? And he's going on and on and on. The second chapter, God says, simple. I want you to go to your watch and prophetically peer into the future. And I believe this emerging generation of believers are going to be architects, engineers, contractors of the future. And those of you that are registering for End Your Year Strong, these are some of the things that we're gonna talk about. How can I architect the future? Because the future doesn't come from without here. God has put eternity in our hearts. So that means the future is coming from here. And to create just for two days, we have an opportunity to create the atmosphere and an environment for God to yes. begin to speak to you about the next 10 and 20 years of your life. Mm. And we're very deliberate because what the world needs is leadership, industry leaderships from music to science to education. And I think the greatest challenge of today's Christian is to see that there's not a dichotomy between Sunday and Monday to Friday. Mm. Because he's 
planting you there. He's planting you in the industry. Mm. We read Matthew 13. It says that the good man planted his good seed in the field. Mm. And while it was, they were sleeping, the evil one came and planted the evil seed. So that lets me know we were there first. And if you mm. were there first, God wants you to be the head and not the tail, first and not last. And what we want to do is to equip you, empower you, and give you the tools so that you can dominate. Yes. I say this over and over. The emerging generation of believers will be those that dominate. And the first law of dominion is to have dominion over what you are not. Mm. Have dominion over what you, you are not. And um, it takes a while for people to really understand, have dominion over what I'm not. Yeah, because a lot of us have these avatars. And we never tap into the inner space. You know, the greatest exploration is not outer space. It's not Mars. It's inner space. Mm -hmm. And God wants to give us a Jacob experience. There's the scripture that says that God sent a word to Jacob and it lit on Israel. So God wants to introduce you to the next best version of yourself. And he wants to do that over and over and over again. So this emerging generation of believers mm. are going to tap into this apostolic and prophetic dimension. Oh, cool. And we're going to operate wow. from there where everything that we're building is not for today. We're building for tomorrow. Because if you're building yes. to deal with your life now, you're, it's already too late. The world is planning for the next 20 years. Yes. That, that, 30 years, you know, and I say to people, look, how would you like 2023 to be your best year ever? Mm. I want to take it a, a step further. How would you like this to be your best decade? Mm. So, you know, understanding what God is up to in this world, we have an emerging generation an emerging generation that is not based on age. Joshua, most people don't realize, Joshua was an old man. He was just a couple of years younger than Moses, but he had a new mindset and it was attached to the new normal. It was attached to what God was going to do when they got to, to Jericho. So the reason why he was able to survive the 40 year track is because of vision. And, you know, the scripture said, right? Vision is the law of documentation. If it's not mm. written, it's not. So you have to be able, you look at Jesus in Matthew yeah. chapter four and Satan attacked him. You know what he said? It is written. You got to be able to write your vision. We, we want to help you to know how to write your vision. I live off of a 20 year vision. This is my second 20 years. I'm already three Jeez. years ahead. The greatest challenge of the church, which I was going to ask you, but the two, two, two of the greatest challenges of the church. Number one, to convert Christians into becoming believers. That's challenge number one. <laughs> and the second challenge is to help them to overcome identity crisis. Mm -hmm. You don't know who you are. We don't know who we are as human beings. The more human you are, the more godlike you are. He didn't make us mm. to be an orangutan or a monkey, but he made us a little lower than angels. He compares humanity with angels. That's how Jesus. powerful we are. And so, you know, did you know there's over 150 dimensions of power? God said, behold, I give you mm -hmm. power. Over 150 dimensions of power. And how mm. many dimensions does the average Christian no, we're going from powerless to powerful. And there's this emerging generation of believers. Um, there's a new species of believers yeah. that are getting ready to be exposed. And I believe you guys are the new Jeez. generations, the new species of believers. And we are emerging. And it's not age specific. You're going to see Z generation, A generation. You're going to see millennials. You're going to see baby boomers. You're going to see the emergence. And what God is doing for each one of us, he's rebranding us. Mm -hmm. A brand. What is a brand? A brand is the image that comes to a person's mind and the emotional attachment to that image. 
Jesus said, whom do man say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're like Elijah the prophet. Some say you're like one of the prophets. And he spent mm -hmm. his life explaining his brand. He said, when you think of me, I want you to think of a door. What is a door? An opportunity. I want you to think of me as the way. What is a way? The way is a life strategy. There's a way that seems right unto man, but the end they're all yeah. judgment. So that way, there's a life strategy. So I, the way, the truth, I want you to think of truth. What is truth? truth? Liberator. So, you know, you think of the quote that says, um, if, if you teach a man how to, that he belongs to the back door, he will go there without, without instructions. Mm -hmm. And if there be no back door, he will demand that one be built. And so what God is doing is restoring our minds so that we could think mm -hmm. at the level of the Garden of Eden, you know, with Adam. He didn't have education. Yes. And he became a zoologist, a CEO of a global company. And, you know, you, you just think about it. He and his wife were introduced to manufacturing. So they were the first designers. They made their first, <laughs> they made their first designer piece out of leaves and God said, no, let me show you how this is done. So they were in the manufacturing business and um, we're going to consume the Bible in such a yes. way that is going to change how we show up in this world. And I'm telling you, this is going to be our most powerful. And that's why you had to come. You had to come. I didn't know you were doing this new recording. I didn't know that bringing a new sound, your best album. And I want wow. those of you that are listening to make sure that you register right now because Todd Dulaney is here. I want to hey. ask you, I want to hey. ask you a, a question. What can they expect at End Your Year Strong? Because this you've been at End Your Year Strong before. What can <laughs> they expect? And how did it affect your life? Uh, so I don't know many any atmosphere more charged than the in your your year strong like i i don't know i and i that we were last time we were there i remember like it was yesterday we had all denim i had blondish tips on my and the reason why i remember it is how good god was in the atmosphere the atmosphere is life-changing i realized that we were turning i was like oh man this is perfect because it goes to this is being set up for whatever is next in your life and i just said to release the biggest record of my life but it only makes sense for me to go go to this strong so that i'm set up for whatever is to come whatever god is going to do over the next three years through this that's what everybody can expect that you're getting set up this is a setup the atmosphere unreal um, from the stage all the way to the back. It's going to be glory and it's going to be felt. <laughs> that is so amazing. That's so amazing. Thank you so much. So we want you to go ahead and register right now um, at andyouryearstrong.com. It's really great. You shouldn't be coasting out of 2022. You should be running. And we're, I believe that in at and you're strong, God's going to give you the wings to soar. You're going to go to the, an, the next level spiritually, emotionally, financially, go to the next level in your prayer. We're going to go to the next level in our worship. Yeah. This year, we're going to be building a new prayer altar and teaching people how to build prayer altars, um, which is going to be the precursor. We're going to take a tour. Uh, throughout the United States of America and a few other countries, just raising up um, altars of prayer. So we want to connect people um, in a prophetic way to their power source, which is God. The emergence, the emergence of the next generation of believers who make a difference in this world. The scripture said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Rise, shine, for your light is come. So how can people connect with you and how can they consume your 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 next project? 
Absolutely. You can go to um, That'll keep you up to date with everything that we're doing. Instagram, I'm always on there. Um, I handle my own socials because I, I the people that are just hiring somebody to do it. So if you want to reach, reach me on there, you actually are talking. <laughs> that is so good. So you heard it straight from um, Todd Delaney's mouth. We admire you. We love you. We love what you're bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. Anything we can do to support what you're doing. In fact, we should do a, a session next year. Just on yes. Facebook. What, Dr. Trim, and just what, out. Whatever you're doing, I'm, I'm in. Whatever you do, whatever you I'm in, you, you speak to me in a way that makes me get up and want to go. Like what I got to do. After even hearing you, do you know what you, you say? If, if you have to go back and listen to what, what you said to be like, oh, wow, that was God. Hold it. Be down right now with a bunch of information that, that I, especially talking about the frequencies. You listen for frequencies. I listen for frequencies. When I listen to music, the first thing I listen to is frequency. I heard a couple of pieces. You know, the Bible said we should not be envious of the workers of iniquity. But in some instances, I am jealous. Mm. Jealousy is different from envy. Envy is wanting what someone else has. Jealousy is not wanting to share what you have. And yeah. I feel that, you know, in terms of music, um, we need we need more cutting edge sounds, and I hear the sound. I do hear it coming from many of the gospel um, artists today. And I, but I want more. I yeah. want more. I want more instrumentality. I want more movement. I want more sound. And I think that you're one of the individuals that is going to bring that sound. We're consuming wow. it for healing. We're consuming it for direction. We're consuming it. And I said, if shouts can bring a wall down, can you imagine if we tap into that prophetic dimension where the incurable would be cured? Yeah. That's what I want to see. Right now, scientists are doing, doing what they can, but there's still yeah. so many gaps and I believe that that gap is the frequency of sound that God wants to introduce to the world. Um, yeah, and, and I believe that's where you are. That's where I am. I think that's yeah. where the hunger is, where people yeah. are saying, I need something, but they can't articulate what they yes. need. Um, and I believe that's what is needed. Because when you hear the truth, you know it's the truth. Yes. It transforms something in you. When truth is told, it demands a response. Yes. And when we're able to tap into that sound, this is what's going to happen at And Your Year Strong. Yeah. And I want to yeah. thank you for, you know, everyone says your whole name. They never just call you Todd. So I thank <laughs> you, Todd Delaney. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you so much. And we want to invite those that are in the music space, producers, songwriters, psalmists to come because we want to spend some time laying hands on you and releasing you Absolutely. to your next. Releasing to your next. So your yeah. final words to those that are in the industry and those that will be attending strictly for the worship experience. Yeah. So this is one of those e events that we don't want you to be there. Dr. Trim, your um, track record speaks for itself of you and the, the in your year strong. We've seen the manifestation of the presence of God. So for everybody that's listening to, to us, this is not, not you, if you miss yourself a disservice. So be in the place so that you'll be ready for whatever. Everything. Wonderful. And you're strong. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Absolutely. And we speak blessings over what God has put in your spirit that he would blow um, success into the womb of your Jesus. ministry and the project. 
And um, we bless those of you that are here uh, today. I call it midweek miracle. May God send miracles to your home, your business. May he give you breakthroughs in terms of your relationship. May your children be released from a rebellion, from prison, from sin. And may God give you a God encounter tonight. Before you go to bed, expect something great to happen. We bless you in Jesus' name. And thank you for hanging out with us for the last couple of minutes. God bless you all. Bye for now.